So to create a new build path, all you have to do is go blueprints, building blueprints, build types, and build path data. And then once in here, just click the little plus here and give your new build type a row name. And I'm just gonna explain a few of these options. So you've got name and description. These are just used on the radial menu um, to tell the player what's going on. Uh, then you've got type. Now type is the kind of grid that this uh, build type will be able to snap to. Um, so you've got all of the types of grid there. Um, if you want your item to be free place, so you can just sort of put it on anything, uh, you want to choose decoration. Next is health, as, as you'd probably expect. Uh, take damage, whether or not it can take damage, or whether or not it can be rotated. Um, rotation increments is um, how much it will be rotated when the player hits R. Um, upgrade build part is the building that it will upgrade to when the player chooses that option. Uh, repair item, so um, it's easier to do an example. If these were both set to two and this was set to one, um, it would cost uh, say if 20% of the health of, of the building was missing, it would cost uh, four, um, four stone and four wood to repair it. So whatever the repair cost, um, you multiply these by whatever the repair cost is. Um, next is the blueprint class. Now you can set this to any blueprint you want, um, but if you want the upgrade, repair and delete features, um, you're your blueprint's going to need to be a pair, a child, sorry, of the um, master build part blueprint. Um, so, and I'll go into a little bit more detail about that in a sec. Uh, static mesh is just the static mesh that's shown in the world. Destructible mesh is, is the destructible mesh. Um, position offset, that's if you need to make some small adjustments um, to your placement in the world. Um, building cost is just the cost of the building and then grid required um, is whether or not the item can only be placed on a grid so for example this is a window frame so it can only be placed on a grid so next i'm going to be showing you some of the options um, if you would create a um, child blueprint of the master build part so i'm just going to go into here and you can see we're in the viewport um, but we have these two uh, let me just uh, turn on the visible. So we've got these two grids here, and one is for the window and one is for the door. So this just means that we can um, much more easily place our door and window uh, grids on our um, static mesh. So a good example would be um, our door frame. So you can see here, I've um, set the mesh to the uh, stone door frame. This is just a preview. So if you set your mesh in here, it won't be used. The mesh in your um, build part data will be used. Um, so you can see here, I've positioned the um, door grid in the space for the door. This just makes it a lot easier um, for having custom build parts and stuff. If you wanted, for instance, double doors and stuff like that, or you wanted a bigger hit box, um, it's much easier to do now with these um, uh, grid actors here. Um, also you'll have, uh, let me just see, so we've got these um, tick boxes, so you, for this one I'm just using a door grid and for the window frame I'm just using the window grid, so when these are ticked that means that it will use that grid position. Um, then you've got the option menu one, and that is if the player were to come up and interact with this wall, um, by pressing E, uh, this is the menu that will open up. So as you can see, we've got it set to none, uh, so nothing will happen. Owner required option means that the player has to be an owner of this building for the menu to open. Um, and then we've got the same here for the build menu. And we've got that set to the building options menu, and that's uh, where we can demolish and upgrade, for example. And again, we've got the owner required, which you'd probably want on for that, because otherwise other people would be able to destroy um, other people's stuff. Um, next you've got the interactable text. If if the if this um, actor is interactable, we just tick that and then interaction text is what the player will see 
when they hover over the item. Um, and that's pretty much it for options in here. I'm just going to show you the blueprint quickly of the openable door. So if I open this, you can see that this is um, a child of the master build part, but it's got lots of custom stuff going on. So um, the multi we've um, we've got the interact event here, which is part of our interface, and you'll have access to that if your blueprint is a child of the master build part. And in here, we're just doing a simple check to see if the player is an owner. Um, if it is an owner, uh, don't worry about this, do once, but um, if it is an owner, we do a multicast interact. And then that tells this door to swing open and swing closed. So um, if you had, for instance, a uh, light, um, you would have the event interact. You probably wouldn't check if there was an if it was an owner because anyone can turn a light on and off, um, and you would just have that event um, plug straight into your light on light off um, blueprint, um, and then down here um, you've got the information for um, when the door is destroyed. So we set that it's pending destroy, so it won't be saved. Um, we set the static mesh to be um, none and then we set the destructible mesh to be the destruct destructible mesh item and then we apply damage to that destructible mesh um, in your if you make a custom blueprint you're probably going to want to just copy this over and paste that into yours um, just so you get the destructible mesh effect um, and that's pretty much it guys it's it's quite a simple system um, you can see here we've got our door um, and you can have loads of stuff going on in the viewport and still be able to spawn it in the world um, so yeah that's pretty much it thanks for watching guys if you have any questions please um, give me an email over at support at